Some time ago I made a video review of the Simple Theory Gear Pack Stove. Well now I have the Simple Theory Gear Pack Stove XL. If you're interested in hearing more about the XL version, keep watching. Okay, before we begin, I just want to point out that this stove was sent to me by Mac at Simple Theory Gear. I did not pay for this stove. Okay, what I'd like to do is take you down to the tabletop. We're going to go over the specifications and the design of the stove. We'll go over how it can be used with a number of different pieces of cookware. Then I will show you how it can be used with a variety of fuels. And then, of course, we'll get outside and do some testing. So let's start with how the stove was sent to me by Mac. And so what I received was the stove inside of this nice lightweight cotton sack. And along with it, Mac sent one of his small grates, which is really quite nice. And I'll show you, of course, how that can be used with the stove in a minute. And right now I'm going to set it aside. So inside the sack, and you can see that the sack is deeper than it needs to be for the stove. And that, of course, is so that you can match this or pair this with a number of items I'm going to show you in a minute so that they'll all sit inside of the same sack and you don't have to have a separate stuff sack. So inside of the stuff sack, so the stuff sack aside, is the stove itself. And the stove came with three components. The prim primary stove itself, of course, and in the bottom of the stove, and this is one of the key features of the stove, is a plate that locks in which doubles, it's known as the speed ring, which doubles to not only lock things into the bottom, but to be used on top of the stove in a couple of different ways I'll show you shortly. And the other thing that Max sent was one of these stainless steel plates that acts as an ash pan when used underneath the stove like that, just to prevent hot coals from igniting any fires on any combustible materials underneath. But it can also be used as a solid fuel plate, as we'll demonstrate in a little while. So I'm going to put the plate aside. We'll keep these two items out for the time being. Now, I did say I'd go over some of the specifications, which, of course, will all be listed in the video description below. So to begin with, and I think this is a critically important thing to understand, this stove is completely designed and made by an American-owned company and made in America. There is no offshore production to this stove whatsoever. So the metal in, used in the stove is a 304 stainless steel, which is on the relatively inexpensive side for stainless steel, and that helps to keep the cost down for the stove, but it's perfectly adequate for the job for which it's been designed to use for, for this stove. So the overall weight is 14 and a half ounces, and that includes the speed plate and the ash pan, or 412 grams. The height of the stove is 5 and 3 sixteenths, or 13.2 centimeters. The width is 4 and 1 quarter inches, or 11 centimeters. The upper burn chamber, that would be from the top of the pot stand here into the fire grate inside, measures at 3 and 1 half inches, or 9 centimeters. Now there is a lower burn shape, which burn chamber, which is on the bottom, and that measures a mere 1 and 5 eighths inches or 4.1 centimeters. Before moving on to what fuels can be used with the Simple Theory Gear Pack Stove XL, I wanted to bring in the original one so that I can give you some comparisons and also show you where some of the improvements have been made. So to begin, you can see that there is obviously quite a big difference in size between the two stoves. In fact, I think this will probably demonstrate the size difference quite well. Here's the original, and it will actually sit down on top of or inside of the new version. Uh, just a quick uh, note to mention as well, Mac had considered discontinuing the original stove in favor of just producing the new XL version, but he received enough feedback that he decided to keep the original size stove in production. However, he is going to include all the improvements that went into the XL in the original. So the design that you see here is discontinued and except for the size, the size will remain, remain the same, but all the other features I'm about to show you, the differences, will be included in the original. So that's uh, one of the hallmarks of working with Mac is that Mac is extremely attentive to what people suggest to him. He listens and, you know, he's got his own experience. He is extremely knowledgeable and, and with a lot of experience in stove design and using stoves out 
in the woods that he he listens very well and he looks at all the ideas and then he incorporates what he sees as improvements to the stove. So what did he improve? Well, probably the one that shows most evidently is the feed ports. If you look at the two stoves, the original one had a feed port that was considerably lower. And the intent here was just to be able to feed sticks in, of course, longer sticks than you might use in other stoves so that you'd have to do less process and slowly work the stove, the sticks in. That worked great, except one of the downsides of that is if you wanted to use, use wood pellets, which is a great alternative with this stove, it didn't make it easy to use the wood pellets because they wanted to pour out and you'd have to do some kind of modification to the stove. So in the new version, Mac lifted the, the feed port up this much so that now you still have, you can still feed sticks in there, obviously, but it will also hold a good amount of wood pallets, which of course we'll talk about in a few minutes time. Now you are going to be half, or you will have to process your sticks a little shorter. Long sticks uh, won't work as well. I mean, they can be a certain length outside of the stove, but you ca they can't be really long sticks. So you are going to have to process them. Personally, I prefer the higher feed port on the side of the stove. It just, you know, I have to break my sticks up a little bit smaller before I put them in, but that's, that works fine for me. So what else did Mac improve? Well, at the top of the stove, Mac had, and I've done modifications to the stove. I mentioned that in the, in the re review video on this, but Mac had uh, extensions, curved extensions, I guess is the best word to use for them, very similar to what's on the bottom of the stove. He had those on top of the stove as well. And two things about those. One, I found that when I put the speed plate in and turned it and locked it in, uh, if it got really hot, it sometimes jammed the speed plate. So uh, that didn't seem to work too well for me. I also found it quite difficult to get the speed plate into that lower position when the, the, there was a fire burning. So I did cut mine out a little bit here. It also, in addition to making it easier to put the speed plate on and off, increase the amount of exhaust air that can come out the top of the stove. And I think that was probably one of the biggest reasons for the change that Mac made, is now there is much more room for exhaust air. So stove design is important to balance intake air in the bottom or through the sides or wherever the intake air is being drawn in and with the air that's exhausting out. If you have a mismatch, you can have a couple of things happen. You can either have your fuel consumed very quickly, burn through very hot very quickly, or you can have too little exhaust where if you put a pot on top, you'll, you'll dampen down the airflow to the point where you'll get a lot of smoking. Uh, that's what was happening uh, a little bit, not, you know, not too bad, but a little bit with the original version, is that it would dampen down the flames to a point where you started to get smoking. That's not the case now, not with the new stove. You've got lots of exhaust flame. He's also reduced those projections back a little bit so that they will still be a oh, wrong plate. Drop the plate down easily. I'll demonstrate more in a few minutes' time. And it's not going to impair exhaust flame, uh, air out at the top. Now, I'm going to show this again, of course, but right at the very top is where this crenellation, this projection at the top, there's a notch that helps with the speed plate laying on top and locking in. And there's a, a few other improvements that I'll demonstrate as I go along, but I just wanted to take a moment to show you the two of them side by side. And of course, to mention that, Mac is still making the smaller version of the stove, except it's going to look like the XL with all the improvements of the XL. All right, now let's move on to the different fuels that can be used in this stove. So when it comes to the different fuels that can be used with the Simple Theory Pack stove, obviously the first choice is going to be wood because that's what the stove was designed around. So to begin with, um, I would recommend that unless you're on a stone surface or mineral earth that you put the ash plate or some type of ash plate, if you don't have this metal one from Simple Theory Gear, then a piece of foil of some type on the bottom just to prevent any of the hot ashes that will fall through those holes from maybe igniting any combustible surfaces. Uh, there's another benefit, of course, to using this ash plate on the ground is that if you're on wet ground or on top of frozen, or frozen earth or, or anything else, this will help insulate the stove and the fuel from that cold so it won't draw so much moisture up into the stove and make it just a little bit more efficient. So lay the plate down, 
lay the stove on top. So now there's two ways of using the wood with the stove. The first one and the one that I think a lot of people will gravitate towards is pre-loading the stove. So you get a bit of a Swedish fire torch type of effect. In order to do that, you're going to have to gather all your wood up first. You're going to cut it to size so it's just below the top of the stove to give some clearance, stack it all in, and then build a small fire on top. It's a great way to build a long-lasting fire with a steady, even heat that will go for quite a while. Uh, it does mean that you're going to do all your work up front. The other alternative, of course, is a bottom-up lit fire. And so you build a small fire with a fire starter, or whatever you're going to use, inside of the stove, and then begin adding your sticks, primarily through the feed port. So that works to give you a little bit more control over the heat so that you, when you want a really intense heat, maybe to bring water to a boil to start with, then you can build your fire up and have a good intense heat. But if you want to reduce the heat for a simmer, then you just feed less sticks in and let the fire die down to a certain amount. Now, I just want to point out as well, there are two ways you could get that bottom lit fire going. One would be to put a fire starter or whatever you want inside of the stove and then begin feeding sticks in. Or put your fire starter right on top of the, the ash pan, light it, put the stove on top, and allow the fire starter flames to come up through the bottom of the fire grate and ignite your fuel as you put it in. Okay, so that's using it with wood. Now, after wood, probably the fuel that most people will gravitate towards is alcohol. And the reasons for using alcohol, pretty simple. If you're out and you just want to stop for a cup of coffee, you're not looking to cook a full meal, you didn't want to take the time to gather processed wood and get a fire going, then alcohol makes an alternative that is very simple. It also means that if you're out on, well, right now we're frozen in the ice here in Nova Scotia, so it's uh, going to be a little bit more work to find the dry wood that you want, and it's going to take longer for that fire to really get going because you have to overcome the cold that's in the wood. So I might just, if I'm all I'm looking for is a cup of coffee, is just use an alcohol stove. You can use a variety of alcohol stoves. The one that I think most people will use is either the Trangia or one of its clones. Right now I'm using one of it, the Trangia clones, the Alex. This is an old one I've had for some time. This one's just relegated for testing here in my basement. So to use that, I'm going to talk about the different ways you can use it with the stove to get different heights or pot gaps. And by pot gap, we're talking about the distance from the burner to the bottom of the pot. So to start with, if I took the Trangia and I drew dropped it in directly with no other uh, items inside, I'm going to get a pot gap of two inches from the burner to where I'd put the pot on top. That's a little taller, or a little bit more of a pop gap than a lot of people like to have for their uh, use, when they're using alcohol. Uh, it still works. It works just fine. It means you'll probably just go through your alcohol a little faster than you would if you reduce that pot gap a little bit. So how can we reduce the pot gap? One would, way would be to take the cap, put the cap down inside, then put the alcohol stove down on top of that, and now I'm going to have a pot gap of one and three eighths inches to the very top right here. That's just about the one and a half inches that a lot of people like to use. Personally, I like to use one and three quarters myself. I find that is a very effective. However, if I put the pot ring or the speed plate on top, and we'll talk about that in a, more in just one second, I'm going to increase that gap just a little bit, and now I'm going to come to one and three quarters. I really like that, that one and three quarters height. So this may be the way I use it most often is with the, the uh, speed plate on like that. Now there's a couple different ways of using the speed plate. I could also just drop it down inside, and we'll talk about that more in a second. And now I'm reducing that pot gap to one inch. So if you really want to slow down the consumption of alcohol and the speed at which your water comes to a boil, decrease the height or the gap or the height of the pot to the burner, we call it the pot gap, and you'll do that. You'll, everything will slow down for you a little bit. All right, let's just take the alcohol stove out. And I want to talk about the speed plate just a little bit more because this is one of the improvements, I think quite a significant improvement, that Mac made in this version of the stove. So on the original stove, when you put the speed plate on the very top looking to get that maximum amount of height, it was a little precarious. It wanted to move around because there was no way, for, nowhere for it to set in and stay in that position. Well, Mac has changed that. 
let me see if I can get this up close enough, you can see a depression in each one of these projections up here or crenellations. And what that allows is for the speed plate to drop on and stay. And it's, it's not locked in, but it will stay in place and it's much less likely that you're going to knock it off. So that's a, a, a much rece well received improvement to the top of the stove. The other thing, whoa, sorry. The other thing Mac has done is increase the distance right here for more exhaust air. And we talked about that when we first started the video. He's also shortened these projections, which had been used originally to lock the speed plate in and uh, unnecessarily so. Now, they serve a very good function on the bottom to lock the speed plate in to keep everything inside. We'll talk about what you can store in the bottom of the stove in a little while. But right now, what this does is you can drop the speed plate on top of the lower portion here, and you don't have to worry about heat and expansion causing it to jam up. It comes off very easily. You're still going to need some way of grabbing onto this, either to put it on or to put it off. A pair of pliers, like a multi-tool or something, is a great thing to have with you for doing that. And Unless, of course, you put it on before you even start uh, building any heat inside of the stove. The other way, of course, is flip it upside down. Now, why would you use the speed plate at all? Why not just put your pot directly on top? And you can do that if you have a large diameter pot, such as this 12, meter, 12 centimeter zebra or anything larger. But if you packed your stove in with whatever you were going to cook in inside of it, nest it inside of it, then it's going to be too small and it's going to want to drop down inside. So again, if I'm using my Stanley Cook and Brew, it's going to drop down inside. And that's where the speed plate comes into play. So you place the speed plate on top. And now my Stanley Cook and Brew sits on top and it gets a good height and lots of airflow and is going to concentrate the flame where it's, where it's uh, required most right on the bottom of the pot. Uh, also works again with a water bottle and with my 750 mil cup. So it works well. Now, you, yes, you could use it with the, the larger pots, but it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to do that. So there you've got how the speed plate will work with, uh, with the alcohol stove. So what other fuels can you use with this stove? Well, uh, after alcohol, I've got to tell you, I really like using wood pellets. Now, some people say, why would you bother carrying wood pellets with you when wood is free and available in the woods, which is true. But wood pellets are cheap and don't take up a lot of space and work incredibly well in a properly designed stove to give you a good cooking heat. And, you know, you can use it to start your fire going if you don't want to use it completely for all your cooking needs. And then if you've got damp or suspect wood that you can't, you can't guarantee that it's going to work as well because it's not perfectly dry, add it in on top of the pellets and you're going to dry it out and it will combust and you've got an extended fire. So I did quite a bit of testing with wood pellets in this. And again, this is one of the things that Mac improved in this version of the stove was not only did he raise the bot or the feed port up so that it would hold wood pellets without them pouring out, but he also changed the size of the holes in the bottom of the feed plate or the burn plate, sorry, just enough to prevent any from falling down through there as well. So in my testing, now you can see if you can do better than this, but what I got was with wood pellets, I put one cup of wood pellets or 500 mils of wood pellets inside. I think that was just the right amount. You could put more, but I found that it uh, airflow was restricted coming up through the bottom just enough that it, it didn't work as well. So one cup of pellets in here, uh, that's all I wanted anyway because tw that gave me a 20 to 30 minute, and I did this a few tests, so depending on the wind, depending on the temperatures, I got between 20 and 30 minutes burn time with the wood pellets. That's more than enough for most of my uses. So if I went down to a half a cup of wood pellets, I would still have a nice quick fire that would bring water to a boil for plenty of long period of time when you think about it, and uh, you know it would work very well inside of this. So wood pellets is an excellent choice. Now what else can you use? Well it is designed from the get-go to be used with solid fuels or gel fuels and how you would go about doing that is flip the stove upside down. You can either use the ash pan which is designed to fit in perfectly or you can use some type of foil or a little foil cup or something. I would not recommend using a solid fuel directly on the burn plate. You can, absolutely. I just find in my, my testing that it just, it burns too quickly. Too quickly so that I can't even bring water to an effective boil. You need to have something to slow the burn of the pellets, or not the pellets, sorry, the solid fuel down. So something like that ash pan inside. And now you're gonna have a gap here 
uh, what did I say it was? One and a half inches to the top. So again, now this is, you can still use the fire or the uh, speed plate in here and then put your pot or whatever you want on top and you're going to get a one and a half inch gap and that's just about perfect for well, actually it is that in testing a lot of people will confirm this myself included that one and a half inches with a solid fuel tab seems to be the ideal height uh, you can go a little higher it'll work just as well but any lower than that and it doesn't seem to work as well so that is a great place for using your gel tablet or your solid fuel or gel now to use a gel fuel you're going to need some type of a little cup maybe a foil cup or something inside of here to hold the gel in because otherwise it's just going to spread out on you what about using it with charcoal? Well, Mac has quite a few videos where he's used this with charcoal and I have as well. And what I found is that if I use like a Kingsford briquette, a formed charcoal briquette, and I'm, the only reason I'm using that for this uh, demonstration or for this discussion is because it's a known size. It's, it's uh, the same re regardless of brand. If I was to use lump charcoal, I couldn't tell you how much I put in because every piece is a different size. But using a standard briquette, I can get 10 briquettes in here and still have room at the top to put a pan on top. 10 briquettes inside of a cylinder that big around is going to give you an tremendous amount of intense heat directly up. It's going to be great. Uh, and yes, it will boil water very quickly. Um, it'll also grill. So that's one of the nice things about having this grill that Max sent along is that with charcoal and the grill placed on top, perfect for doing a small steak, piece of chicken, hamburger, sausages, whatever else you want to put on top of there. And of course, this will work as a pot stand if you want to use it that way as well. So these grills are actually quite a good accessory to buy with the stove. So charcoal is an excellent fuel for using inside of this. Now there is one more fuel. This is not something most people would think about right away, but I'll tell you when I discovered that it could be done, I found that this just adds to the, the uh, number of things that you can do with this stove, the flexibility and the multi-fuel capacity, and that is with a propane gas cylinder. So what you're going to need is some type of a gas stove that you can take apart just to get the burner. So this is a very inexpensive one. I think I, I have shown this before in other videos. I bought this off of AliExpress and uh, they're, they're not very expensive. I, I can provide a link for you in the show notes below. You may be able to find it cheaper in other places. It's a good functioning stove just the way it is. But what I like about it is you can disassemble this so that you end up with just the burner and the valve and attachment point for your gas cylinder. What you end up with is something like this. So now you just have the burner itself, and you can see I've pre-attached it to a cylinder because I'll, I'll demonstrate why in a second. And now I can use this in combination with the Simple Theory pack stove, Simple Theory gear pack stove, because Mac has put a hole directly in the center of the burn plate, which will allow this to be attached through. So to do that, take the top of the burner off. I push that through the side hole. Now it does require me to put my fingers underneath and kind of hold it in place. So just a tiny bit of fiddling just to get started. So you can see where I'm holding that there with my thumb. Reach down inside. Screw that back on. And that is, makes for an extremely effective uh, gas propane cylinder with a remote feed so your, your tank is well away from your heat. You can adjust it while it's out here without having to get yourself in too near the heat. And it, it works incredibly well. And again, you can use it with any of the attachments, either the speed plate or by placing your pot directly on top. Okay, so we have gone through wood, alcohol, wood pellets, butane gas, solid fuel, and charcoal. I think what it's time to do now is get outside and put some wood in this, and let's demonstrate this in operation. Simple Theory Gear. This is the Pack Stove XL from Mac at Simple Theory Gear. Mac, uh, I guess, appreciated the video that I did on the original Simple Theory Gear stoves and decided, unasked for, 
uh, unquestioned with no expectations. He just sent me as a thank you the XL version, but you, uh, you know, after having gone through the XL version uh, quite extensively, as you'll see in a minute, uh, I've come to really appreciate the design changes Mac has, and how could I not do a review? So here we have the XL from Simple Theory Gear, and uh, this is what we're going to have our lunch on today. Now, I did pack it inside of my 12 centimeter Zebra, and you've seen in the earlier part of the video where uh, it'll fit number of things will fit inside of it or it'll fit in inside of a number of things. It all depends on what pots you want to use and what you're going to be doing that day when you're in the woods. So it's nice to be able to have options in terms of stacking and this works well with a number of different vessels. So I'm going to take it from here and put it in the fire pit next to me and then I'll change the camera angle. And this also came from Mac. It was a nice little thank you. It's a heavy stainless steel wire grill and the reason I brought the grill is Guys, we're going to be grilling some sausages, but that's another story. So let's get this set up and I'll get the fire started. So I won't need today these two items, the speed plate or the ash pan slash uh, solid fuel plate. All I'm going to use is just that right where it is. Where's my feed port? There it is. Okay. I think I'm going to try and find a yeah, more or less level spot. Now, to get this going, I'm gonna go with a bottom-up burn on this one. It won't take a whole lot. I'm putting in a little bit of birch bark. Just literally, I picked up off the forest floor. Didn't have to peel any trees to find that. And I'm gonna start with some small spruce twigs, working up my way up to some, or actually it's pine. This is all pine, another deadfall branch that was sitting right in the middle of my campsite off of the big pine over my head here. Would have been a widow maker, it was that big. But we'll start with a small little bit of pine and we'll work our way up to larger sizes. There we go, once you get a strike. And now I've got an, a flame source that I can put inside underneath where all the birch bark is and give that a second to ignite the birch bark. I think it's probably started already, but I'll give it another couple seconds. Nice long time, I think we're going now. Yeah. Pull that down inside, put it away, ready for another fire. Now it's smoking, expectedly. That's a lot of birch bark. And the pine will smoke as well. All right, I think you've got a good view of it. Now I'm, I am casting shadows for myself. I wonder if I can bring you in a little closer so you can get a little bit better view it here. Good, all right. So I ended up putting some quite big chunks of pine inside so you can see it. Uh, well, it's working well, good. All right, lots of flame. Let's put this on top. And the 12 centimeter sits on perfectly. I'm a little worried about the ground, but it looks like it's going to melt in and be stable. Good. Right? And there's what I wanted to show you. No smoke. No real smoke, nothing that the pine wasn't producing all by itself even before I put the pot on. And now I can just feed in some pieces of wood through the side window or the feed port on the side. Keep this fire going. And as my water comes to a boil, a little bit of smoke because I just loaded so much wood in. As my water comes to a boil, it'll heat up my sauerkraut and I'll be able to just put the whole can the whole bucket or the whole sorry the whole belly can aside and the hot water underneath will keep my sauerkraut warm while I throw in some maple and uh, get those coals ready for put the sausages on. So I'll give that a few minutes and then we'll be ready to put the sausages on and we'll come back. Before we close this video out, I just want to go over a few of the pros and cons for the Simple Theory Gear Pack Stove XL version. So to begin, the pros are it's exceedingly simple, and that was inherent in the design by Mac was that this could be used very simply, no assembly required, just take it out, lay it down, build your fire in it, you put your pot on, and away you go. All you have to do then is wait for it to cool down, or you can do what Mac does, which is throw water on top of it or snow on top of it to cool it down a little bit more quickly. So that is probably the number one feature of this. Number two is it is solid. It This is 
virtually bomb-proof. I don't think you could damage it, certainly not by dropping it, maybe by running over it with a truck, but short of that, you're not going to damage this stove. So it's going to retain its shape. Mac has, has had no deformation or anything else, either from fires. I haven't either, no warping or anything else from fires, even after he threw cold water on it. If you are concerned about what cold water can do to it, just put another fire inside of it that will re-anneal the metal and uh, you're good to go again. So extremely simple, ex exceedingly simple, exceedingly strong. As you saw from my demonstrations, very multi-fuel capable. And that also is one of the real benefits. Yes, it's designed for wood, but it's also designed for alcohol and charcoal and butane gas and solid fuel. So you have a variety of fuels you can use in this. Even though it is heavy, and that may be the single con, is the weight. But that weight is also what makes this so strong. So, you know, other than that, what you're going to get, you're not going to lighten your backpack with this, but you can reduce the amount of volume that your cook system is going to take up because you can either put this inside of a pot that you're going to use or put a pot of the right size inside of it, having everything nesting inside. And that was, again, one of the things that Mac was looking for in the design of this stove. So overall, I'm going to say that this is a, and when you look at the price of this, I think you'll find this is a very competitive, especially for an American-made product. Very competitively compriced, you're supporting a small, local, Americanly owned business. And uh, yeah, it, this is just a great functioning stove. Mac, I want to thank you again for sending me this. You've been very generous in doing so. I would has not hesitate one minute to purchase this for myself had you not to sent this. So thank you. Now, if you have any questions about the Simple Theory Gear Pack Stuff XL, or the original version, which is being redesigned with all the features in the XL, then please put them in the comments section below. I know Mac reads them, and I'm sure Mac will pick up and answer anything that I can't answer. And Mac, I'd invite you to. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll also put the links where this can be purchased from Simple Theory Gear. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.